context and data flow diagram sample 3, Netflix or basically any other paid video streaming service. Now we're first going to look at a context diagram to reflect Netflix and as with every context diagram we'll start with the process in the middle and we'll call it Netflix information system. We obviously have the Netflix user accessing the system. Okay, they have to enter in their login and passwords and they're entering in data into the system resulting to querying types of movies. They may be searching for specific movies and they're making selections about movies, what they want to watch, okay, in order to watch it. From the system, they get back movie details, they're able to watch the movies and monthly they get a receipt from Netflix uh, for their payment for their subscription. On the other end of this, okay, we have a bank Okay, and the bank is obviously uh, managing the account side of things. Okay, the payments for subscriptions go to the banks. Okay, because obviously with Netflix, we're not dealing with cash. Everything is done via card and online. The bank sends back its payment receipts to Netflix so they can confirm that the customer has paid their subscription, which obviously, as we saw, coming back to the customer out of the system is their subscription receipt. Let's now move into the data flow diagram. So for the data flow diagram, we'll start with a Netflix user, okay, and they enter in their account details into the system, okay, and obviously have to pay their subscription before they can actually start using it. Okay, so that goes through the bank. The bank confirms that they have actually paid their subscription. Okay, confirmation of payment uh, needs to be made. The system has to generate a receipt, which is then usually uh, emailed to the customer. From here, okay, they can now log into the system, okay, and that once they've logged in, okay, they have to get checked against the user database. Okay, the database confirms that they have an account and then they can start using the system. First thing they do, and we all love doing it, is going through the catalogs of movies or TV shows or whatever, okay, and finding something to watch. Okay, in order to find these things, they're all stored in a movie database. Okay, they're all stored in different sections. They might have different ways of categorizing them. Uh, you see the different categories of different genres. From there, we can uh, select something to watch from Netflix. Okay, we then view its details. Okay, so we can read about it and think about if we want to watch the movie or TV show. Okay, the details are retrieved from the database and then we can actually watch it. Okay, so we select the movie, we watch the movie. Okay, the movie data is retrieved from the database, we watch the movie. That then is obviously viewed by the Netflix user. So I hope this gives you an understanding of the inner processes of the Netflix information system. Obviously, before we can start using Netflix, the, uh, the user themselves has to have a subscription. They've got to pay for their subscription. That gets confirmed by the bank. They get a receipt. Then they can start using Netflix after they log in. They can search movies. They can view movies. And then they can watch the actual movies. Okay, And that is all retrieved from the movie database. Okay, So a lot going on within Netflix. And obviously, this is a good emulation of any kind of paid on-demand video streaming service, so whether it be Stam or Amazon Prime, anything like that would work in a very similar manner.